Welcome to our session on Bourbon Tourism 3.0. The official title, however, is going to be the one that matches this book, The Rebirth of Bourbon, Building a Tourism Economy in a Small Town. And that small town is Bartstown, Kentucky, where we are today at the Heaven Hill Bourbon Heritage Center, run by this guy, Director of Visitor Experiences. Is that right? Absolutely, absolutely. So take at, this location and the one in Louisville. That's right. At the UB, as you guys like to call it, the Evan Williams Bourbon Experience. And Dan Calloway, who is in charge of tourism over at Bartstown Bourbon Company, like a stone's throw away. Yeah, great Kinda. to be here. We're good Kinda. neighbors. If you, if you can throw like uh, Aaron Rodgers on that commercial, that Allstate commercial writer. Is it Allstate? No, it's State Farm. Isn't State it? Farm. State Farm, yeah. Uh, I, I won't tell which I'm insured by, so I won't get in any trouble. But at any rate, we are close. Bourbon tourism is a big thing in this county, which is Nelson County, in case you've not been to Kentucky. But Bartstown, you should know as the bourbon capital of the world. And a lot has changed in tourism over the past, what, 30 years, I guess? Actually, we were doing the math earlier. It's probably since 1975 is when Absolutely. it started to kind of bubble Absolutely. up, right? Back then, Heaven Hill had what they called a tour mobile, I think, but describe what that was. It was a tractor involved so, or something. 30 years ago, it was way before my time, obviously. <laughs> but um, from rumor has it, it was more of a tractor pulled, um, I'm gonna use a hay wagon type concept, if you know what it is. Um, fast forward to when I came in 2013, we had a trolley that we used here to take tourists around. It was kind of our way of giving back to the community. So instead of just focusing on Heaven Hill, we would put guests on, we'd take them uptown, show them the state park, show them what a beautiful downtown we have, show them the restaurants and some other attractions, and then we'd bring them back here so they could finish the day with us. Was, was somebody, I, mean, I know when, like when it started in 1975 and through the 90s, people could kind of show up and say, could you give us a tour? That was about as formal as it was. It was about as formal as it was. Was it at least structured by the time you came around? To it was where... structured by the time I came around. So it was set times throughout the day. We had a set driver that took care of them. Um, the driver was so dedicated that he learned all the words to my old Kentucky home. And so he would sing it to, his, to our consumers as he drove them uptown. Now, I said he was singing. I didn't say he could sing. So I'm not sure if they enjoyed it or not, but he sure enjoyed doing it. And it, it created such a buzz that people came in and asked just for him so they could get that experience. Were you brought aboard? to build this facility that we're in now or um, did you know that was happening and they hired you as it came along? So this is called the Bourbon Heritage Center. Bourbon correct? Heritage Center. Um, as you know, as you can hear behind us some, we're undergoing major renovation. So that name will change in the next couple of months. Um, not a name that I can share as of yet. Um, but no, they actually, this building was built in 2004. I didn't come into the company until 2013 and I was brought on to be the general manager of the Evan Williams Bourbon Experience in downtown Louisville, which was the first distillery back on Whiskey Row in over 100 years. So I just was very excited to start that. And about six months in, the opportunity came for me to become over both centers. And then about three weeks ago, I was promoted to the Director of Experiences um, for Heaven Hill Distilleries here in Kentucky. Which means you're over this expanding experience as well. The ever-growing experience outside, yes. <laughs> and Dan, you got the opportunity to come to Barstown Bourbon Company, which didn't exist at mm -hmm. the time. And when the laws changed to allow cocktails and drinks of all sorts to be sold at a distillery, all of a sudden Barstown Bourbon Company said, we're going to build a restaurant, and a serious restaurant, and that's where you came in. Talk exactly. About, talk about that opportunity. Yeah, it's, it's an opportunity to combine culinary beverage distilling and, and create what we call the modern bourbon experience. So initially came on, we were building a bar and built a, a full bar program uh, to celebrate all of Bardstown, all of bourbon. You can get great Heaven Hill products right there um, and really create a community where we have all kinds of distillers and, and, and bourbon teams come in and celebrate bourbon in our restaurant that opened just a couple years ago. And then one year ago, we opened our public facing visitor center and uh, a place where you can take a tour, cocktail classes, barrel thieving, all kinds of activities. Now, as part of the press, I've gone there several times and it seems with every year, that area where the dedicated visitors experience it started out as going to be bottling right mm -hmm. then it was going to be changed to something else and poor bottling i think it was going to be the back of the plant now bottling has its own facility under construction out in the field right exactly because yeah. everything was just evolving that quickly where were we always on your heels when it when the bosses are coming to you say well i want to change something around uh, it's been incredible to be a part of it's been su uh, such a rapid expansion like you say and the flexibility to move bottling multiple times uh, to create the visitor center um, what initially was just going to be a cafe turned into a full um, napa valley style destination so it's it's been incredible now you guys already have your your visitors experience in place where um, people are nosing whiskey and talking about the different components and whatnot but my own personal story with this one here 
was that's where I actually learned to like bourbon. And someone who was the director of tourism at that time, Don Pristle, if you're watching Don, shamed me to come in there because I don't like bourbon yet. And she said, go in there. There's somebody who's really good at leading these tastings, and I want you to taste them. Talk about where that is or where that was and what's going to be happening down the road in terms of the You Do Bourbon. Yeah, so program. one of the things we pride ourselves on here at Heaven Hill, and it's really expanded throughout the entire Kentucky Bourbon Trail now, is it's not just about what we saw in Westerns back in the day where you shot that bourbon and, you, you know, and moved on. It's about the experience. And so we teach you how to enjoy that experience from the moment it goes into the glass to the moment it goes on your lips. And so we walk you through the whole process and the education behind it, how you nose it, the aroma that goes with it, and how it goes on your palate and the finish. And so that's a great part of learning because people don't understand, and apparently you didn't either until we, oh. someone here educated you. So we'll take great pride in making you the man you are today. And all the credit. Uh, yeah, take okay. all the credit that we can for that Something today. Gone. So we've really done that, and we've tried to carry that over in both of our centers. And here in the new expansion that you're seeing now, you're sitting in one of our new tasting rooms, and each room will play to a different palette and a different mash fill and a different... Um, product but then there's also going to be a couple other experiences here one will be called you do bourbon when you actually get to taste products that are not available as of yet and different than what's on our retail shelves and you get to bottle it label it purchase it take it home with you and during that process we're going to educate you why those are different why this mash bill is different why the aging in the rickhouse plays a huge role in it so we really go into detail about it we don't want to just we don't want people walk away going it's just a drink it's our history in their hand and we want them to know why it is do you feel that the distillers are driving these experiences or are you reacting to customers' desires to want more information or is it a little or a lot of both? Dan, me? Whichever. Whichever. I, I think it's a little of both. Yeah. Um, I, what we're finding is people want uh, experiences. They want, they want to create something when they're on site. So it's finding ways to engage them, um, to interact, not just have more, uh, a lecture on a tour, have things you can smell, you can touch, you can learn. Uh, you can be engaged with and, and so that's what we're all about. Talk a little bit about the tasting experience at Barstown Bourbon Company where you, you're actually beginning with just straight distillate, right? And yeah. Some other, there was some, I can remember some colored glasses at some point. There was a pink <laughs> and a green solution that I don't remember the actual contents to, but jump in and tell right. us what that well, was. Our tour, it starts right from the get-go with the tasting. You know, we, we dive right in, we tell the story of the company, of Barstown, um, through the tasting. So we start with two different distillates, um, you know, untouched uh, by the barrel and we get in there we nose them and we just see the difference in flavor profiles you know we have 47 different recipes that come out of one distillery so we show two and the difference of the grain and, and how disparate flavor profiles can be when they haven't had the barrel yet and this gives them that kind of crash course to be able to understand a little bit about what's happening when they go through distilling and fermentation and exactly exactly yeah. we want to explain the process before we go through it so we really feel like we learned something by the end of it now, Jeff, you've had kind of a longer-term perspective of what's happening here in Bar Sound and Bourbon Tourism as a whole. The town has had to adjust. Uh, talk about that, because here's this town that's been at 13,000 inhabitants for a long time, and, and now many, many more people than live here are coming here to places like Kevin Hill and Bar Sound Bourbon Company and Lux Row and um, uh, Barton, and of course down at Maker's Mark. There's so much going on that they have the option to go see what's it like here now versus you know back in 2013 well first and foremost the i'd say the biggest thing we should talk about is how the community has embraced this change like the community could have very easily put up an obstacle or a wall but they've they've embraced us they've accepted us in all of us even though heaven hill's been here a long time the amount of tourists that we saw has not always been here a long time so they've really had to grow restaurants have had to adapt their menus they've had to grow we've had to put in new hotels um, there's lots of new activities going on around downtown. Um, we've had to up our tourism marketing game here in Bardstown. Mm -hmm. So everything is changing for a bit for the better. You know, we're seeing an average of 75,000 people a year here in this on this property. We hope to double that with our new expansion um, and get rid of COVID, obviously. So we're looking forward to those things. So there's going to be more adaptation. The one thing I hope we don't lose is I hope we don't lose becoming the heartbeat of the bourbon world because this is where it all began. This is where it all is. Um, you know, you go out into Louisville where we have another facility. It's really an education process, and we want to, to send people there, but we really want them to come here where they see it, smell it. You know, when you get out of your car, you know you're here. And so we want everybody to have that experience. And I think the, the locals have been very supportive of that, and we're grateful for that. Now, Bart Sound just jumped in and said we're going to take care of every component. We're going to have the bar, we're going to have a restaurant, we're going to have the distillery, we're going to have this collaborative program, and eventually down the road, I think, maybe some uh, overnight accommodations. That's the 
long-term plan, right? Absolutely, it's, it's in the plan. Right now, we just finished our expansion with a, with a brand new bottling facility. We've got that, it uh, will debut next year. Um, and after that, we'll look at a possible hotel. What does that look like um, for the whole experience? I mean, does that, is that something, and, you know, you and I have talked a lot about what you've done in the past, but hotels is not on your resume, is that correct? Right, I, I don't think we'll be jumping into the hotel business anytime soon. Uh, <laughs> maybe we'll have one on site. But we probably do a lot of things that are not on our resume right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, every day is a new adventure in this game, and so I'm sure lots of things that we do every day is not part of what we signed up for in the beginning. But it's been a great adventure so far. Absolutely. Um, your bosses jumped right in knowing what they were going to do in, in this very modern distillery of bourbon tourism. You've had to watch your bosses adjust. Has, has that been like a whole team growth process where you're like, you know, we, gotta, we really got to spend the money on this. It we, has we, been. You know, I know you don't want to do it, but if we're going to do this, we really need to do this so we don't have to come back and do it again. Yeah, so th this is our 85th anniversary in 2020, so we've been doing this, the family's been doing this a long time. So it has not been a hard sale to get them to, to invest because their investment is about their heritage, their history, the community, as you know, Heaven Hill's good at, at giving back. So I haven't seen a huge adjustment from the family because from the moment I've been a part of the company, they've been very proactive and forward thinking. Um, and so that's been really good for us. What's it like to design these tourism experiences that don't exist elsewhere? It's not as though you can go to look at somebody else's distillery and copy off. Maybe, I mean, Maker's Mark's been doing it for a long time, but mm -hmm. Maker's is Maker's. It's not something that you want to duplicate because you shouldn't, you know, I mean, because you want a unique experience. So do you always feel like you're reinventing the wheel some days? I think that that freedom uh, enables us to be creative. You know, um, because it hasn't been ingrained year over year the same way, we can look at it from a new perspective and, and create fun things that we haven't seen yet on the trail. So is it is it some spitballing and throwing mud against the wall, or is it a little bit more precise process than that? Uh, we think through what our end goal is, you know, whether it's on the tour or a cocktail class, and then we think of, uh, of the best way to get there in a fun, educational way. Now, you guys have heritage to work with, so that's always a part of the program. I mean, because the, the expansion that we've seen, the new buildings under construction now carry that look of the original Bourbon Heritage Center over to something else that, that clearly is not 2020. It's yeah. supposed to look dated. Absolutely. So when we started the planning process for this new renovation, the first, the first thing was we're going to tear this building down and build new. And Max Shapira, if you know anything about Max, he's very dynamic. And he was like, why would we tear down 15 years of history to build something new back? Let's make this a progressive. And so now that we're here, we're very grateful that we did. So you're in this building we built in 2004. We're building a replica of our 1935 distillery that you'll get to be a part of. So it's a great throwback to our history um, by, while showcasing our future. That's like some bumper sticker. It's going to be like some tagline. There. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trademark gonna that. I'm going to coin that. Dan, you can't have that. <laughs> I'm going to coin that, and we're going to have stickers. You're gonna, next week, all my staff's going to have that shirt on. <laughs> What, what does the city need to do to, as, as these distilleries that I pointed out a moment ago are all ramping up their tourism experiences, what, does the, what could the city do to amplify that and even become, I don't know, just make it a greater place to come enjoy bourbon and the bourbon experience? I think we're seeing the connectivity between the distilleries. I think as Bardstown grows, the distilleries in Bardstown grows, we, we see we're all on the same team. No one goes to Napa Valley to visit one winery. It's, it's the same concept here. So has that, has that been, do you cooperate kind of off the record with each other and say, yeah, we're doing this, we're doing that, you know, what about, how's that work for you? Does it, Absolutely. any collaboration I, like that? I think that's the strength of who we are as an industry, especially in Kentucky. You know, Pepsi and Coke wouldn't play well together, but all of us distilleries play well together. When you leave this property, we want you to go to Willett and we want you to go to Barstown Bourbon Company and we want you to go to those places. Because when you go home and you talk about it to your friends, no one travels for one destination. But if you can come here and experience every story along the Bourbon Trail in a four or five day span, that's what we want. And we want to do it well together. And, and I would imagine that there's not a ton of competition just yet. So Willett, which is over my shoulder, um, has built uh, the bar at Willett, which is a great restaurant bar experience. Um, that, that, is that kind of the rising tide that's floating all these new bourbon tourism ships? The restaurant component? Yeah, exactly. I think, well, I think the restaurant component plays a lot of roles. So, so the outside perspective doesn't realize that a lot of us are building our restaurants for responsibility side of it. It's about that responsibility. We don't want people to have cocktails or, or drink here and not have food to go with it to help them do that. So our restaurant will be different. And I think that's where we all play really well together. Dan is a fine dining establishment and we want that to be, we want to send people there that want that. If you want a great, easy to go Kentucky inspired food, we want you to stay here. If you want a very crafted meal, 
we're going to send you to Willett. And I think we all feel the same way. So if someone that Dan says, I don't really want that here, and he would say, hey, well, then you should go here or here. And I think that's where the success sums comes from. We don't say, oh, well, I don't know where to send you. We do that everywhere. If someone walks in here now and says, where can I go grab a great meal at lunch? I send them to Mammy's or I send them to Crestos. Or I, we just do that with everywhere. And I think the whole community has embraced that network of friendship and neighborly support. I think it's cool. There's greatness within each of us. You just have to look for it. Some find it in the quiet moments. Others find it in the company of friends. Our namesake, Elijah Craig, discovered greatness when he first charred oak barrels to make the smooth, rich taste that became known as bourbon. Today, we make our award-winning small batch for those who strive for the best in themselves and in their glass. Discover the greatness within Elijah Craig Bourbon. The first Napa Valley-style destination on the Kentucky Bourbon Trail to combine distilling, culinary, and beverage experiences. The Bardstown Bourbon Company places the science and art of whiskey making front and center. Our blend of bourbon makers push the boundaries of innovation to produce the highest quality Kentucky bourbon, whiskey, and rye, while honoring the traditional craft of distilling for a modern, authentic bourbon experience. To learn more about our full line of products or schedule a tour, visit bardstownbourbon.com. Talk about, uh, back to the, the food and beverage experience I really like. Uh, I think too few people understand how well neat whiskey pairs with food. Do you really get to bring it down to that granular level and say, you know, I maybe hope, hope you guys will do it down the road, but do you get to do it and say, you know what, I think it would pair really well with our Fusion Series. Yeah. Really neat? Yeah, yeah, neat. It's, yeah. it's been incredible just to have these teams on the same roof. The, the beverage, the culinary, and the distilling, and the partnerships, uh, everything from our barrel cocktail program that we work on with the distillery um, to paired flights. Our chef uh, lines up the flights, uh, creates different um, brittles. He has a pepita brittle, uh, an apple popcorn that goes right with every oh release. Um, oh, cool. And then throughout the meal, you know, the, co the, the cocktails are thought out to match uh, the dishes, you know, and it's... Uh, it's just been incredible collaboration throughout the building. And your barrel-aged Manhattan that you see in most bars are in those little bitty one or two or three gallon things. And you guys have a 53 gallon barrel full of Manhattan. Exactly. It's uh, pretty That's a beautiful incredible. thing. Yeah. The only thing, it, only you could do it at a distillery. Right, right. And, and it ages in our rickhouse. We'll put uh, eucalyptus, rose petals, orange peels in with the old fashioned. And, and you know, everyone works on that. We'll have Steve Nally, our master distiller, come down and, and taste some with us. So been great. I can attest that it's great. It's really good. Oh, that, it's right there at the either ends of the bar, right? Didn't you get the barrel-aged old-fashioned on one side mm -hmm. and the Manhattan on yeah, the other? Yeah, you can go half and half if you want. Yeah. <laughs> and get back to the eating food part, right, if you're going to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, you're going to have a little bit of food anyway. All right, last question for you, Jeff. Talk a little bit about, a little bit more about You Do Bourbon. I mean, that, that's really immersive and involved for the, 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 uh, the visitor. Do they, is it going to take a long time? Is it a two-hour thing, half-day thing? I mean, so it'll depend on the guests. You know, one of the things we're really focusing on with this property, as Dan and I talked about earlier, I showed him around, was the self-guided experience. So you mm -hmm. can kind of learn on your own, but if you really want to know more and be in detail, then you do this, you do bourbon, and there'll be an educational classroom where you go in and you learn about X products that we're bringing to the table. And in that, you'll learn about the mash bills and, and the proof and, and the difference in the aging. Then you'll get to taste. And at this point, we're not sure if you'll taste that blindly and not tell them what each product is. Then you'll choose your favorite and you can choose the one that you want to take home with you. And so then you'll go into a room that's the filling room. It's, it's an amazing room. We can't wait for that to be public. Where well, they get to go to each station and fill it, cork it, label it, all the things that they do up here in the bottle lab, but you get to do it by hand and personalize that label and take it home with you. And then there, on the other side of that is a lab. So if you want to know how we check the proof, you can go in and see it. If you want to know how he knows, you can go in and, and do all those things. So it's a full education process. The great thing is you don't have to buy that bottle of bourbon if you decide you don't want to, but you still get that immersive educational experience on the other side when you're done. That's, that's way cool. What's, what's coming up for you guys? I mean, you're always changing. Yeah, developing. something really special. Just <laughs> Is it debut. secret? I guess you no, can't I, say. I can talk about this one. It's uh, our vintage whiskey library room. Yeah. Speakeasy style, beautiful green. Uh, we, we feature bourbons all the way back to 1892. So, uh, you know, Barstown Bourbon Company celebrating the history of bourbon as well as being modern. Uh, you can taste history, go through the decades. Uh, some rare Heaven Hill in there, too. Uh, it's an incredible uh, private event space. Uh, how does that work? Because I've, I've been in the room, and I know it only holds a certain amount of people. Um, do you have to have a certain number to be able to book that or reserve it? Um, we, we're, we're looking at that currently. So it hasn't opened to the public yet. Um, 
it'll be uh, available to be rented out. We'll do vintage tastings in there. The best way to do it will just be go to bardstownbourbon.com and you'll have all the information there. So this book, we talk about, like I said, the rebirth of bourbon and building a tourism economy in a small town, talks about all of this and all the machinations that have had to happen and all the growth pains that people had to go through to make this happen. And it was, let's see, this is September, just came into our hands. It was finished in January. A lot of it's outdated already because of the, the many things that are going on that you guys have talked about. And I'm and certain if you went to Willett and to Luxro and talked about all the things they're doing, it's like, <laughs> yeah, that's old. Isn't that cool? Is it, or is that a challenge? You're like, oh man, the competition's running ahead of us. I think it's both. I think it's cool and it's a challenge. But it's really cool to talk about the growth opportunities that we see. And it's exciting for us because we're in it every day. But when you're a consumer and you walk in the door and you're like, I just read such and such. That's not, well, that changed. You know? So then you have to go back. And then, so it's, it's a little bit of both. But either way, it's great to share. And it's great to see not everybody that walks through this door is just here about the bourbon. Many people are here just with the history and the heritage that goes along with bourbon in general. And some of those people don't even care to drink. They lo love that side of the story so they love much, that right? Side. And we all have, I, I challenge anybody that's watching to go to every distillery and tell me they didn't learn something new that they didn't already know, because we all have our own story to tell, whether it be the new guy on the block or the old guy on the block. And that works either way, age-wise here, obviously. <laughs> but the, so it's just all about what we educate the people. Jeff Crow from Heaven Hill, Dan Calloway from Barstown Bourbon Company, thanks so much for being here. If you want to learn more about bourbon tourism, this book is a great place to start. Stick with us. we got a lot more episodes to come at the 2020 Kentucky Bourbon Festival, the virtual edition. Sit with us. Sit with us.